all the boxes and things like that, and then the shampoo in the damn pump, and then you see all the fish and things, right, and things over there. But with linguist, not anyone who's a native Gullah Geechee uh, being there. So this particular year, a linguist that I know that works out of the University of Texas told them they needed to invite me. And they were quite stunned because many of the other linguists even had the audacity to say to me that I didn't know your people still existed. I mean, he told me this to my face. All right, so it was very, very interesting being here that first time. So at the end of my session, a Haitian sister had been in that session, and she came up to me and she said, you know, I loved everything you had to say. It was fabulous, because me and the linguist actually switched sessions around so he could be in mine, and I could be in his. So it supported everything. So she said, if there's anywhere you want to go in the city, I'll take you. So I said, you know what? Show me your city. You know, and so we came here, we went to Miami Beach to a concert, and then she said, well, I can take you to Little Haiti. I said, let's go to Little Haiti. So we came here, and we went around, and then the whole group came later, and we had lunch here. So as you see, the entire building is a museum. It's a mural. And then out front, the tap tap normally sits out front. But when I called them, they said the only thing you won't have is the tap tap because unfortunately somebody ran their car into it, and we have to take yeah, so we have to take it away for repairs. Otherwise, that was the thing that I loved so much about it. If the name fit and a tap tap was outside, we call them Jimmy. Okay, all of that. So yeah, so the same thing used to be out there. Now they'll really bring it back. They just have to get it repaired because yeah. some, I guess, you know, probably off somebody ran right off yeah. and hit it. Yeah, yeah, very important down there. Mm -hmm. Important yeah. yeah. So what is the tap? It's a vehicle. It's a jitty. Like a, uh, you could call it a folk taxi. Oh. <laughs> what do you call it like in New York? The dollar man. The dollar man. Well, I mean, like, everybody knows how special and unique the Gullah Geechee culture is already. That's why we're here. But I was in Washington, D.C. on Monday, and I had the opportunity to meet with the Environmental Defense Fund, which is a mainstream environmental group that really is not particularly um, connected with black people usually. Right. However, they struck a relationship with the Queen and the Gun of Egypt people in order to study the impact of the fishing industry and the decline in involvement of African American fishermen. So uh, we've set up a number of meetings um, in the Gullah Beach area, in Florida, in the Carolinas, and in Georgia, so that these people could come down and hear from the Gullah Beach fishermen what the impediments are that are driving them off of the, the, the waterways traditionally right. for the last 400 years yeah. made their living and um, their sustenance. Well, skip forward to the future, and I think it was last month in July right. that they had a meeting in Saint Helens. Texas. Oh yeah, then in Texas, Galveston. Right. right. Mm -hmm. To bring together the Gullah Geechee fishermen along with some other, some white fishermen right. and some people from Belize, Belize and Mexico. Or, and Mexico, who mm -hmm. are having the same challenges. Right. Well, the reason I'm mentioning this story is because all the white people in D.C. are like, their minds are completely blown. Because as part of this event that they had in Texas, they played a fishing game, some kind of a game. Yes. Oh, yeah, the yeah. yeah. They called it go fish. Go fish, yeah. The people were split up into different tables based on, upon who they were. Like, they're going to get you at their own table. No, but they know. They told us to pick what table we wanted to go oh, to. Oh, see, I already know yeah, that. Yeah, and we just went, we gravitated together like we do. Right. And exactly. so we were at a table pretty much. We had one Gullah Geechee over the table with the other Bacrochella. Right. <laughs> and no, one Belizean brother. Well, 
Just Johnson. Go ahead. And Ricky was there. Yeah. And as part of this game, they spread out all these quote unquote fish, artificial things right. on the table. And I guess Queen and Beth can, catch and can, Queen Beth can tell you exactly how yeah. the game was played. The bottom line was all the other tables, all the other people cleaned up everything off of the table. They took everything that you was to take. <laughs> the Gulagichi people were the only ones who did not deplete and decimate the thing. Which meant that at the end of the game, they had you know, young and things to replenish the earth, with the sea. And all the other people, the other white people were coming to them asking them to buy shares and yeah. let them get some of this and some of that. The reason I think the story is so vitally important is because it illustrates the sanctity of this culture, that they have lived close to the land for 400 years and they still have that rhythm of connection to the land and that knowledge that you can take everything Okay, you have to leave some things for future generations and for the future. And so I am definitely, all the, all the people that talked at Environmental Defense Fund, they were so excited, they were like, we have never seen anything <coughs> like it. And these people, they didn't do it for show no. or to prove a point. That's the way they live. So I just wanted to make a point of saying, what we're celebrating here this weekend is not just something in name, it's something in nature. And I'm really advocating for the story to get on national TV yeah. and to get yes. real yes. Um, to get real exposure because it shows the value of the culture and how it should be emulated. Thank, Thank you, you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say Thank one thing. You. I was looking at this door here. Yes. And if you notice, the door is basically a hut. It's a hut, right. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that was my That's beautiful. No, I'm glad you pointed that out. Oh, and, wow. and, and of any of the rooms and any of the spaces we could have sat, they just told me go where right. I wanted. Right. And I felt comfortable here. Right. And I guess it's because of the time for we come in the house. Yeah. You understand? Know yes. Time for we out. Wow. Okay, and this is Brittany. Here we Hello. Go. <laughs> yeah, the top top. She gave me one flat ginger beer, but I still love her. Though. <laughs> Wait, Brittany, Brittany, tell us this. Tell me about the food. What is this you just put down? I just put down a very traditional Haitian dish, a legume. Uh, dairy blanc. Dairy blanc. And banana peas. And banana peas. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Pick the here. You don't have that much. It's really good with the legume because it's making uh -huh. it really spicy. It's homemade with cabbage and scotch bonnet peppers and vinegar. Okay. It's sit overnight. It's homemade hot sauce right there. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Got you. All right. All right. Thank you, man. What is that that you just gave? Uh, That's the flat frittata with sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. acra. And banana peas. The acra is like a vegetable, like a white piece of white in the center. Okra. Yes. Acra. No, acra. Malanga. This one's oh, different. It's, different. Uh -huh. yeah. it's a vegetable and it melts into the batter. It's really, really good with our watercress that mm -hmm. people love. They go crazy over it, the watercress. Okay. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. And then what you got there? So you know, so, you know, rice and beans. I see. You should have got that. That looks exciting. Yeah. So let's, I tried to get him to get that. That looks exciting. 